Welcome back to Transfer Talk. We are joined on the sofa now by Nikki Bandini and Mina Razuki for the latest news coming out of Italy. Right, guess where we're going to start? <laughs> the same as it's been every single week with Dusan Vlahovic. It, it looks, Mina, like he is on his way to Juventus, which means, of course, he's not coming to the Premier League. Does that really end any interest in coming to the Premier League now? Yeah, I think so. I think the way that the agents have behaved when it comes to... Um, English interest in the player. I mean, Fiorentina have come out and said that they are open to every possibility. They are willing to talk to everyone. They are willing to discuss any negotiation. But the agents and the player, well, the player has always been keen on Juventus. And when Juventus ended the fray and realised that there is a lot of competition with him and they don't want to wait into the summer, just in case there's just a lot more competition, because he's now obviously could be a free agent um, coming summer after that. So they thought, let's just take our chances. He can help us get into the top four. And the agents just never even answered any interest that came from England. And the player made it very clear that he'd rather stay. It's easier for him to acclimatise to Juventus. It's the same league and knows it. Um, and that way he can make an instant impact rather than take his time and, and move. And so I think that it's pretty much over because the will of the player and the will of the agent seems to be Italy and Juve. I think it's interesting. I think if you went back and, and when we were first on at the beginning of the month talking about Vlahovic, our sense was that he was happy to see out the season at Fiorentina. And I think really that his position on that didn't particularly shift. But Arsenal's interest perhaps accelerated Juventus' interest a little bit, even though Arsenal were never sort of something that the agent was, was considering too seriously. It was something that I think just created a bit more pressure around um, this transfer and a bit more, again, as Mina said, attention on the idea that Vlahovic had other suitors, that they weren't going to have a sort of clear run at him on their own. And I think perhaps another thing that happened, frankly, in this period right now is Juventus are still fifth in the table. They just had a game against Milan at the weekend where they did not have a single shot on target. That hasn't happened for two years to Juventus in Serie A. They're desperate for a number nine. They want to be in the Champions League. And I think all these things came together and, and sort of triggered them to step forward. But actually... In Vlahovic's mind, that's always been the, the preferred destination. As you said something, we do a show, and, 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 and she said something along the lines of which is true. Fiorentino thought that perhaps with Vlahovic, and even he, the player thought with Vincenzo Italiano, the coach there, and the attacking brand of football that they can play, yeah. they will get close to Europe. But obviously things have happened. They've had absences, COVID, whatever it is, and they're not close to their objectives. So really now there is no need for him to stay because I don't think there's, I mean, he might stay. There's still the possibility that this won't work out but there is now an idea of well actually I can get Juventus into the top four probably a better objective for me on a personal level. You see when I heard that the agent was potentially not even taking calls from the Premier League I yeah. thought what, what kind <laughs> of agent wouldn't do that when there's more money in the Premier League but it sounds like from what you're saying the player clearly wanted it to stay in Italy clearly wanted Juventus and actually he was just really looking after his client quite well. Well, there's always a, mm. a, a sort of okay. well, there's always a relationship between. I'm so yeah. naive. <laughs> no, I mean you're you're right. I mean he is looking out for his player, but you're, there's, there's always a relationship between an agent and player, and so a player. I would say in, in Davich's case, part of it is that Ristich is advising him on what's best for his career and he's got someone who he trusts and who he listens to on that. And look, there's this sort of recent history of players making this move uh, from Florence to Juventus, which is kind of extraordinary because Fiorentina hate Juventus as a club, sort of, that's the sort of history mm. of their fan base. Yeah. But um, Bernadeschi has made that move, Chiesa has made that move, differing degrees of success, but it's a step that uh, players have made. And I think... It certainly makes a lot of sense if you feel that your client is developing nicely in a league, that he's shown he can score goals in this league. There's actually a wonderful sort of symmetry in the fact that Juventus said goodbye to Cristiano Ronaldo, who set the single, single uh, calendar year record for most goals scored in, in a calendar year in, in Serie A, 33, and could now be replaced by Vlahovic, who's matched that record at Fiorentina. So there's the sort of obvious sort of gap at Juventus for a player like him. Um, but I think some of it is, is protecting your young client as well and thinking, look, you might go to the Premier League and be a huge hit. You might make lots of money there. But we're confident that you can score those goals in Serie A. We've seen you do it. And you're going to be the club that's going to have space for you to... to yes, answer. but let's just say that, I mean, listen, they have an, a relationship with Juventus directors and they have had for a long time. So there is a friendship there and there's an understanding between those, between the agents and Juventus directors. 
The thing with is, is that over the summer, there'd be a lot of interest from him and possibly from English teams that are in the top four. So he doesn't need to worry about getting into the Champions League. And let's just say Manchester City would have come in or someone like that. Mm. I'm not sure necessarily Juventus would have been a better bet for him. Mm. So, it, But it's all part and parcel because you don't know where his future lies. But certainly around Juventus, they will protect him. They will make him their star man. And they do believe in him to the extent that this is their entire transfer kitty for the whole of the year, including the summer and they're spending it on Vlaovic. Well, Juventus may be freeing up some wages though with Arthur potentially coming to the Premier League <coughs> funny enough, with Arsenal as well. Is that one close? Do you think that's going to happen? Well, it's interesting that Vlaovic didn't want to move to Arsenal, but Arthur really wants to go. Um, I think there's such an irony in it, this idea that Arsenal and Juventus are pursuing <laughs> the same player. And in theory, if this happens, Arsenal are going to help Juventus to have the money free by taking his wages off the bill to sign the player they wanted. So there's a strange sort of irony to that move for me. Yeah, I mean... Listen, it's, it's, it's very bizarre that Arthur's going up the pecking order for Max Allegri at the moment. He is playing a lot more recently. He wants to move because I think that he would be sort of more of a guaranteed starter than he is right now at Juventus, um, where they t seem to only ever play him for 45 minutes. He's already been looking for houses in London, but Juventus don't want a six-month loan. They want a year and a half with an obligation to buy. So they want to definitively know and, and arrange his future from now. They don't want to be left in the dark and lose for six months. Secondly, time is is really it's going, and the transfer market's closing soon. They need a replacement, and are they going to find one for Arthur in time? Probably not. So it looks like he might stay, despite the fact he wishes to go. See, it, it, he's one central midfielder, so you, you think he might stay. But another central midfielder at Juventus, who's apparently on big money, is, is Aaron Ramsey, who's been linked with a lot of Premier League clubs. Do you think he might end up staying at Juventus as well, purely because of those wages? Yeah, I mean, he's one of the best paid, paid players in all of Serie A. Um, and he's, yeah, not just Juventus. <laughs> yeah, and he's not playing. And that's been an ongoing situation for a while. And a lot of that has been injury issues. But there's also been the question of performances not being good enough. And, and the, 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 the conversation in, in Turin and in Italy is, has his attitude been good enough towards what, what he was expected of him when he arrived as a player? And... I think what's sort of awkward is his, his wages being so big. There's a very limited number of sort of uh, options for him moving somewhere else, and most of them are in the Premier League because the Premier League is by far the, the richest league in, in terms of just the, the financials of it. But so far, he's had interest from Crystal Palace and Burnley, and, and from what I understand, he's said no to both of them. So if he's not willing to take a step down in terms of the sort of level of club he wants to play for, and he's not willing to take a step down in terms of the, the money he's making you really, really reduce the number of, of options for him. And, and it's hard to see at the moment who would be the one that might turn his head. Newcastle is the, the name that keeps getting sort of Magic floated around. and linked. And it makes sense in that perhaps it's a more ambitious project, but there's nothing concrete there at the moment. Mm, well, talking of Newcastle, we, we talked about Robin Gosens. You told us what type of a, a left back he was last week. Newcastle one of a number of left backs that they're interested in but also we're hearing into Milan as well is this another case of where the player might prefer to stay in Italy we don't know whether <sighs> yes I think to be honest with you that if it is the project of Inter Milan or a project in Newcastle he'd probably choose Inter um, firstly it's in I mean Inter play in the Champions League their, their project is already set they have a clear plan for what they're going to do for the next few years right now they have Perisic, who they absolutely love, but he's obviously ageing and they're looking for somebody to replace him. There were reports earlier that they were looking at Timothy Castagne, who obviously also played for Atalanta, hasn't really had such a great time of it in the Premier League. But Gosens would be the dream, and um, and I think that he would really appreciate playing in a in a very attacking formation in an unpredictable um, team that is Simone Inzaghi's uh, Inter. And I think that that is something that he would prefer to do over Newcastle. But obviously it all depends on money. We know that Newcastle has a lot more to, to give and it's about what Atalanta would agree to but the player's will does make a difference I just don't know if this is the type of player who's going to put his foot down I think he'll do what he thinks is is the right thing to do and I, I'm not entirely sure he would say no to Newcastle yeah it's, it's Inter's interest is, is quite recent and and a sort of slightly surprising late push in the transfer market especially when we look at how they've operated since winning the title there's been this really sort of dramatic belt tightening which is what led Lukaku to being uh, sold to, to Chelsea what led Akraf Hakimi uh, to Akraf Hakimi leaving the club as well so to see them sort of talk about spending not a huge sum but maybe 35 million euros and he's been injured 
But in some ways, that's almost what, what makes it make some sense for me is, is the injury more than Newcastle. Because Newcastle need to start winning games sharp now, right, yeah. to, get, to get themselves out of trouble. Whereas Gosens has had a very injury hit season. Past two seasons, I think he's been spectacular. I think he's one of, I think, the absolute best wing backs in the world. And I think he's a great signing for any club. But he has been injured a lot this season. Inter are looking for a long-term answer because they've got Ivan Perisic right now playing on the left of their 3-5-2, playing at wing-back. And so it, for them, if it's someone who can play next season more than this season, that's fine. Um, I, think, I think if that offer becomes concrete, and I think that's slightly more at the exploratory stage right now, my instinct is that he would, he would pick Inter. I think it's a hard club but to But Atalanta are open to a sale. Well, we're, we're running out of time. I've got to ask you about Rodrigo Bantanka, another Juventus midfielder who I just missed out there. <laughs> it's all the midfielders. If, yeah, I know. If he's available to Aston Villa for £16 million, that seems a bit low. Is that just because Juventus are desperate to try and recoup some funds because of Vlahovic? Is it all because of Vlahovic? I, I think £16 million is a bit too low. I mean, they paid around £14 million um, to bring him and it was involved in the sale with sending Tevez back to Argentina at the time. I think they will ask for a little bit more than that and I think they will get a little bit more than that. Um, this is the thing they, they can't obviously lose all their midfielders and they, they definitely want to get to, uh, Ramsey out it's just about you know Arthur and Benton cores it's too much so I think there is um, the possibility of you're gonna have to wait for one of them to stick around but I, I do think it will be more than 16 million but they are desperate for money so you never know this is tied together with Vlahovic Juventus need to raise some money I think in the short term to make this Vlahovic deal happen so part of it is make all these options, put them all on the table and see which one sticks, because that's when you start getting that money. Yeah, quickly. you have to see the... And deadline day is in six days' it time. Is. Nikki, Mina, thank you very much.